It's coming up to 20 minutes past seven Wednesday morning and an important health story for you now because imagine having a seizure in public but instead of people coming to help you, they avoid you because they think you're drunk or maybe even trying to to steal from you. Yeah, it's shocking, but it's the reality for people with epilepsy. That's according to new research, which looks at how seizures in public are impacting people living with the condition. Yeah, today, a charity is launching a campaign to highlight how we should help someone, how we can deal someone who's having a seizure. We'll give you that information. This report from Tim Muffet. In myself, I was feeling very sick, very dizzy. So my breathing then suddenly becomes a bit more shallow, so I'm going... I'm trying to suck air in. Whilst jogging in this field in East Sussex, Simon knew an epileptic seizure was imminent. My tongue's gone, my eyes are gone, I can't move, um, and this is where the big seizure happened. So I've, I've lost consciousness, um, and the next thing I can remember was a dog walker. He didn't know that I was having a, a seizure. That's a common reaction, as Simon knows all too well. He's had epileptic seizures since he was seven. It's like a volcano. You're waiting to explode. A lot of people don't know how to react. I have gone to the stage of wanting to take my own life. The dog walker who found Simon did call an ambulance. But the charity Epilepsy Action says many with the condition are often dismissed as being drunk or on drugs. In a survey for the charity, others reported being robbed or physically assaulted whilst having a seizure. Electrical activity happens in our brains all the time as brain cells send messages to each other. An epileptic seizure happens when there's a sudden burst of electrical activity that temporarily disrupts the way the brain works. I don't want to worry you, it's just, I think, I'm about to have a seizure. This video has been made to help explain what to do if someone with epilepsy believes a seizure is imminent. First, cushion my head with something soft to protect me from injury. All set? People always just see someone having a seizure and they think, call 999. But I think it's sort of more the bit between having the seizure and then between calling 999 that they don't know what to do and they sort of panic a bit. 17-year-old Morgan lives in Grimsby and also has epilepsy. We've arranged a Zoom call with Simon so experiences can be shared. It took me ages to speak about it. Um, and that was probably my undoing. I think maybe this might be a generational thing because yep. I've never really felt that sort of stigma around growing up with epilepsy. I'm preparing to go off to uni soon. Morgan, make sure you keep that confidence. I do work in time, I carry on with life, and I think you've got a great inner strength there. Has that been useful for you? Really important to have hope, and I'm someone who think who tries to never let my epilepsy hold me back, and from what Simon has said, he does that too, and I find that really inspirational. I think being younger is a lot more scary. Medication and brain surgery have helped Simon, but it's his family that are his greatest strength. His daughter Evie and mum Debbie are with him today. You're much more positive, aren't you? If epilepsy was better understood, they're convinced the lives of those with the condition would significantly improve. Tim Muffet, BBC News. Well, we're joined now in the studio by Imogen Cawthry, who has epilepsy, and by Rebecca Smith, who's Deputy CEO of Epilepsy Action. Good morning to both of you. Morning. Morning. Hi, Imogen. Do you want to just tell us your, your story? Because you developed epilepsy when you were nine years old, is that right? Yeah, I've had it uh, since 1996. At the age of nine, I was hit by a car, and the haemorrhage caused bleed on the spot. Um, and um, epilepsy began immediately, and I've had it since, yeah. And how regularly can that happen now, a fit? Um, fits usually happen every uh, three weeks, probably. Uh, they sometimes come in clusters. On Sunday, I had two out in public, which was very frustrating. Um, but it sort of depends on life. <laughs> the happier I am, the fewer fits I have. That's, That's interesting. Just <laughs> and, and when they do happen when you're out and about, 
just just talk us through how you're feeling, how you know it's beginning, and then secondly, how people react. Well, I start with a warning. I begin to shake a bit, and I'm like, oh, fits on the way. I tell it to go away, but sometimes that doesn't work. And um, then I either shake a lot, you know, or um, go very still, and I'll collapse. I have, I have tonic-clonic seizures, and I'm usually unconscious for two, three minutes at a time. Um, and how people react around me is really luck on the day. Mm. I've, I've seen the good in humanity. Um, people stop to um, so kindly give me some water, make sure I'm in the right position, because they know what to do. Um, other times, I've just fallen down the stairs, woken, people walking past me, because <laughs> they just don't, they're scared, they don't know what to do. And I think that it's about time that changes, um, because it's really hard at times to go out in the public. Rebecca, I was really shocked at the numbers mm. and the, the statistics yeah. around the experiences of people like Imogen. So more than half of people with epilepsy have had to avoid public spaces because they're scared of experiencing stigma. Almost half of them have been accused of being drunk or on drugs. And 90% of people with epilepsy believe that public spaces aren't doing enough. That is so life limiting. I know, I know. And I mean, even for us, it's, it's still shocking statistics. Um, because, you know, we live in a world now where it's, there's so much more access to information mm -hmm. and yet still people are clearly not feeling comfortable or not understanding if, if someone is having a seizure, um, which is why we're here today, really, to right, raise that exactly. awareness. <laughs> let, let, let's, let's use this time to, to give us all information about yeah. what we can do. So if somebody, anybody watching this morning, sees somebody who they think might be having a fit... Mm. What, what, what are the things we should be thinking about? Rebecca? Yeah, OK, so we've, we've launched a video which is really simple and will help anyone. So if they go to the Epilepsy Action website, they'll see that there. But there's really four really basic steps to take. Um, first one is comfort someone, you know, cushion their head, make sure they're, they're safe and their airways are clear. Then the action bit is really around thinking about uh, timing the, the seizure or being aware of how long it's going on for, because once it, it becomes longer than five minutes, then it could be an issue. Um, then it's about reassuring and staying with someone, because while they're unconscious, they might not know you're there, but once they're coming round, they will, and putting them in a recovery position to help them. And then the final thing is, if it is an emergency, if it goes on longer than five minutes or, um, you know, for some reason it seems like it's the first seizure, then at that point you want to phone the ambulance. It's also just interesting because Imogen's wearing something, which one of the things yeah. you can do when you're taking yeah. action is check if someone's got some information on them. So this is one thing. Some people wear bracelets, other people have something in their bag. But often you'll find that someone who does have seizures regularly will carry some information to help you, help them. So it's there. Yeah, Im Imogen, obviously you welcome the fact that the public awareness so that hopefully there will be people who will know what to do, you know, if it ever yeah. happens to you again. What would you like to add into that or stress as part of that that, that you think would help as, as a patient? Well, please stay calm. Um, you really don't need to panic. I know when you first see someone have a seizure, it's, oh, my gosh, are they OK and everything. But... Um, do, oh, sorry, my memory is so bad, no, I've forgotten sorry. your name. Rebecca. Rebecca, sorry, after the surgery, everyone. Um, Rebecca explained it very well about what you should do. Um, it's important to time, always, because um, if it's over five minutes, then it's definitely time to call an ambulance. Otherwise, you know, the person should recover fine. Reassurance, I just say, is so important, because when I wake from a seizure, I'm in different worlds. I'm mm. scared, I'm what's happened, I'm embarrassed, um, I feel ashamed. So someone there saying, don't worry, you know, you're fine, you're in Waitrose or you're in the park, you know, really, really, really helps. And I'm so grateful. And you've had people criticise your personal care, you've had someone say on a holiday you shouldn't be there. How much of a difference would it make if everybody heeds this advice and is more open-minded and has greater recognition of what's happening for your confidence and, and for people living with epilepsy? Well, it would be absolute heaven because a recent Mexico trip, 
the tour guides just, what can I say? She triggered seizures for me because she made me so stressed, guilty. Unfortunately, I had a fit. Um, and the next day she said, can I talk to you, please? And uh, I said, yes. And we had a conversation. And she told me I shouldn't be there. I'm scaring people. People didn't come on holiday to see an epileptic fit. I'm not taking care of myself. Um, and yeah, and I was like, huh? <laughs> you know, it's not my fault I have epilepsy. It was just a simple t fit, you know. And then she made me so guilty, so stressed, I had another. And then I decided to leave Guatemala early and miss out on hiking volcanoes. So... <laughs> and you and could have hiked those volcanoes. It's that you just became too self-conscious to... I just wanted to be home with, yeah. with, with some dogs and cats and... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, therapeutic animals. And do normal things, and, so like everyone yeah. else, isn't it, Imogen? And exactly, yeah. and have people who, who see me as Imogen, not mm. as epilepsy. Because right now, too often, when I have seizures in the public, I feel epilepsy is my identity, mm. and I don't want that. OK, well, look, Imogen, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your story this morning. I hope that by doing so, you can gain a bit more confidence and comfort and know that uh, maybe people out there will know what to do uh, for you and for others. Thank you, Rebecca, as well. Thank, thank you. Very much. Thanks. Indeed. Thanks. Undeterred, Imogen's off to South Africa soon. So thank you for sharing <laughs> your story and I hope this trip goes well. Um, the volcanoes it... in South Africa? Uh, I don't think... No, that's... What's it called? The lion's mane. OK. Or something. You can do that. You can do that. Yeah. Enjoy it. And Enjoy I'm it. I'm swimming with sharks. I said I don't care about epilepsy. I'm swimming with sharks. You Good need to talk to Louise Minchin. She's going to be here in a moment <laughs> talking about fearless women. Uh, I think Careful, you'll end book. up in a book. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's just gone uh, half past seven in time to get the news, the travel and the weather where you are this morning. Well done. Yeah. Good morning. The news now for the East Midlands. I'm Natasha Turney. More than 1,200 families, 600 staff members have now contacted the independent review investigating failings at Nottingham's NHS maternity units. For the first time, several families affected by failures in care met as a group with the Trust and NHS England yesterday. Donna Ockingdon, who is leading the maternity investigation, is expected to give more details about that meeting and her latest work today. The region is to be at the forefront of the latest advancements to tackle ovarian cancer. A specialist research centre will be launched at the University of Nottingham. More than 4,000 patients die from the condition in the UK each year. The centre will bring together scientists and clinicians to develop innovative new approaches to diagnosing and treating the disease. New figures released by charity this morning have revealed alarming figures of debt for some people in the East Midlands. Christians Against Poverty say clients in the region owe, on average, more than £11,000 at the peak of their debts. They're launching an urgent campaign called Take on Poverty, which is aimed at helping people who are struggling to afford the basics and stay out of debt. Nearly 50% of those debts are what we call priority debts, and that means they are in debt for things like rent arrears, mortgage, council tax and uh, utilities bills. And to be in debt with those particular types of bills is particularly worrying. And a man from Derbyshire who's given up a 30-year career to launch his own business out of his back garden. David Hollick was a builder in Swaddling Cope but decided on a change and went back to college to do barbering. After spending time training with his own hairdresser at weekends, David built his own barber shop in the garden and opened for business just last week. Definitely scary. You know, I've got to, I've got to try and build this business and get the clients in, um, you know, so I can earn a, a decent living, I suppose. I'm excited that, that people are going to want to come here. You know, I'm just going to just keep pushing, pushing on and, uh, and see where it takes me. Well, it's looking like a lovely start out there. Blue skies and sunshine. But what have we got in store for the rest of the day? Sarah's got the details. Good morning. Well, it is going to be another pleasant day today. The cloud amounts might vary a little bit. They certainly did yesterday, but we still have high pressure controlling the weather and we will see a fine warm day ahead of us as well. So I think any cloud that's around first thing this morning clearing for a time, but it might develop again as we head into the afternoon. But in the sunshine, high UV levels, because it's certainly feeling quite warm with highs of 21 Celsius, 